9-11 truth challenges some of our most fundamental beliefs about our government and about our country. When your beliefs are challenged or when two beliefs are inconsistent, cognitive dissonance is created. 9-11 truth challenges the beliefs that our country protects us and keeps us safe and, and that America is the good guy. My name is Bob Hopper and I have a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Cincinnati. For the past 29 years, I've been a licensed PhD clinical psychologist in Boulder, Colorado. When your beliefs are challenged, fear and anxiety are created. In response to that, our psychological defenses kick in and they protect us from, our, from these emotions. Denial, which is probably the most primitive psychological defense, is the one most likely to kick in uh, when our beliefs are challenged. Something like this go. Many people respond to these truths in a very deep way. Some have a visceral reaction like they've been punched in the stomach. To begin to accept the possibility that the government was involved is like opening Pandora's box. If you open the lid and peek in a little bit, it's, it, it's going to challenge some of your fundamental beliefs about the world. Well, here are a few of those, uh, those spontaneous initial reactions to hearing the contradictory evidence about 9-11. I don't want to know the truth or I'd become too negative and psychologically go downhill. I'm not sure I want to know. If this is true, then up would be down and down would be up. My life would never be the same. Fran. I refuse to believe that that many Americans could be that treasonous. Someone would have talked, but these are beliefs. They are not scientific facts, but these beliefs do keep us from looking at the empirical evidence. So whenever we say, I refuse to believe, we can be sure that the evidence that's coming our way is not bearable and that it's, going, it's conflicting with our worldview much too much. Denial protects people from this kind of anxiety. As I thought about all of these responses, I realized that what is common to every one of them is the emotion of fear. People are afraid of being ostracized, they're afraid of being alienated, they're afraid of being shunned, they're afraid of their lives being inconvenienced, they'd have to change their lives, they're afraid of being confused, they're afraid of psychological deterioration, they're afraid of feeling helpless and vulnerable, and they're afraid that they won't be able to handle the feelings that are coming up. None of us want to feel helpless and vulnerable, so we want to defend ourselves, and the way we often do that is with anger. So then we become angry, and when we become angry, then we become indignant. We become offended. We want to ridicule the messenger. We want to pathologize the messenger. And we want to censor the messenger. So how can we overcome this resistance and denial? The first thing is to meet people where they're at. So we need to understand that questioning is, uh, is patriotic. Questioning is what we're supposed to do as citizens. That's our duty. When we come to the national level, uh, when something like 9-11 happens, we need to be sure that we have a real investigation into who the perpetrators are, and then we need to be sure that those perpetrators are held legally accountable. It's part of the healing process on the individual level as on the collective level. We need the truth in order to heal. 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 We need the truth in order to heal.